Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Tuesday, August 20th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are joined in the studio by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Hey, hey Ryan, uh, who's yes. our guest today? We have a fantastic guest with us today, Jem Finch. Oh. Will Pullen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. On Broadway is here with us. That yes. entire cast is so good, but he it's is great. He it's is spectacular. Spoils. He is so, fantastic. So yes, absolutely. Here. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about his Broadway debut in Sweat and so much more. But first, let's talk about today's top five. It's another day, which means another show has been announced for Broadway. Yeah, I feel like just a few weeks ago we were bemoaning the fact that there were I no know. new musicals yep. coming. And now. and now there are so many. So today yep. we found out about Flying Over Sunset, which is a show I've been hearing whispers about. This has yes, been in mentioned. the works for a few years, mm -hmm. uh, but I think news of its Broadway premiere was mm -hmm. took a lot of people by surprise. Yeah. It will uh, play the Vivian Beaumont Theater at Lincoln Center. And this is the, uh, the it came out of the brain of James Lapine. Always Ooh, a good start. It's a good yes. brain to start to be, with. Yeah. Sunday in the Park yeah. with George, Under the Wood, you know, James yep. Lapine falsettos. Um, mm -hmm. And it has a score. Tom Kitt wrote the music, and Michael Corey wrote the lyrics. And it will star, I mean, people are really excited about this, shrieks. Carmen Cusack, Tony Yazbek, and Harry Haddon Patton will yes. all be starring. Now, this is a musical about LSD. It's about Come celebrities on. doing LSD. It's about LSD, famous right? people doing LSD. <laughs> and what they did was Sold. they took three people from history who all had interesting LSD and sort of experiences and mm -hmm. morph them together okay. so here are the and i did a little research on this because like i said i found this great article um by holly nadler up in cape cod she's a reporter who wrote about she saw an early version of it oh right so okay. it's about cary grant tony gasbeck plays cary grant which Amazing. is i mean um, both very inspired, handsome inspired. different different yeah. looking but i'll be yeah. curious to see him become cary grant <laughs> so cary grant uh had a horrible childhood a horrible father so that was apparently why he sort of like Experimented with, experimented with L you're making a face. Sure. I just, I'm, I don't want to hear about No, LSD is it. just, For I just don't even know what it looks like. I don't, I don't, I don't LSD? Know. It's no. It's kind of fashion now. You know, no one does that. No one does LSD anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Don't know. Um, uh, and then Aldous Huxley, who wrote Brave New World. He was right. a very okay. famous yes. author who then be, be, later became sort of like a, in, experimenting in these kinds a of things. Of and then uh, Carmen Cusack, the fantastic Carmen Cusack, who Apparently sings a song called "Flying Over Sunset." Okay. She sings the title, the title song, song, which is going to be fantastic. Mm. She, of course, was a playwright. She wrote "The Women," right? Yes, of course. Yep. Yes. And um, she apparently, uh, her twenty-year-old daughter died of a car accident. So that was sort of oh. like where oh. her, yeah. So there's a lot of grief and a lot. It's going to yeah. be a Whoa. dark show, yeah. which means I'm going to love I'm it. Into that. This sounds yeah. like right up my That's alley. Crazy. A little bit of Hollywood, a little dark themes. Anyway, it all starts March twelfth, twenty twenty, and soon. opens April sixteenth. And this now means we have eight new musicals announced for the new season. Oh, wow. Diana, Flying Over Sunset, Girl from North Country, Jagged Little Pill, Lightning Thief, Moulin Rouge, Six, and Tina. Wow. So well there were 11 last come year. On. So we need eight. a few more yeah, to come. A few but more. But it, we're, suddenly, it's a, good, it's a good year. I can't wait. Yes. And she's going to show us how to knead with no air. Oh, okay. You I get see it? Do you get it? Yes, yes, yes. Bro, Jordan that's, Sparks. That's a, that's an old <laughs> it's a deep cut. It's a deep cut. It's a deep cut. Yes. Jordan Sparks, the American Idol, of course, winner of, of season six. She is coming back to Broadway. She made her Broadway debut in In the Heights' as Nina, of course, a while back in 2010. But now she's coming back to play Jenna in Waitress, which is so exciting. She will join the music on September 16th. She will place the current headliner, Allison Luff, who will play her final performance on September 15th. Um, you know Jordan Sparks, hopefully, if you watch that Amer season well, of American Idol. she had that Idol. No Air song. And she, she How Can I Breathe No Air? And I like, like Tattoo, I think was the Oh, I that was love, a good one. Um, the Battlefield, though. Battlefield oh, was my oh, jam. Yeah, yeah. It's a good Jordan karaoke Sparks. song. Jordan yes. Um, but now we will get to see her, you know, sing all these wonderful waitress songs. Um, what can I else? She won two BET awards. She has one American Music Award, and she has a Grammy nomination for a music career. We're so excited to have her back. Uh, it'll be great. Love, Jordan. Mm -hmm. And a world premiere play is heading off Broadway. It's called On That Day in Amsterdam. It's about a one night stand. Hey. Oh, Did okay. I get your attention? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. It's set the morning after a one night stand. A refugee from the Middle East wakes up next to an American backpacker. Mm. Good stuff. Into that, yeah. uh, it is the work of Clarence Koo, directed by, that's the playwright, directed by Kareem Fahmy. Uh, it starts October 29th at Cherry Lane Theater. This replaces. 
the Billy Porter Untitled Sex Project. Oh, she apparently was supposed oh. to play that yeah, slot. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know what? Billy's busy. She, he is. He is. He's an he Emmy nominee. Very busy. Uh, I really the want Emmy him, Awards I are really coming up. He might Emmy walk award. away with an Emmy Award. He He'll really definitely win Best Red Carpet. That's yes, guaranteed. For sure. yep. Directing a play up in Boston. Anyway, oh, yeah. Yeah. there are going to yeah. be Play 80, director. 80 more seasons of Pose. Anyway, yes. Billy yeah. will get to the sex Please. project, but it's replaced with another sex project. Great. <laughs> and a complete casting has been announced for this world premiere musical. It is the full casting for The Wrong Man, which is a brand new musical that will have its world premiere. Yes, This please. might become another... Another thing. Broadway like, musical this, for right. the list. Like, I hear this show is fantastic. This could be number nine. This is The Wrong Man. It will have its world premiere at Off-Broadway's MCC Theater this fall. Um, we already knew that Joshua Henry, Sierra Renee, and Ryan Vasquez were going to be a part of the production. And now we know who is filling out the rest of the cast. You have American Idol finalist Anoop Des Desai. So many American Idol people involved right now. Thing. Tilly Evans Kruger, Malik Kitchen, Libby Lloyd, Amber Pickens, Kyle Robinson, Debbie Christine Tiong, and Julius Williams will all be joining the musical. Um, it is directed by Thomas Kale, features a book, music, and lyrics by Ross Golan, and it's based off of his concept album. It's set in Reno, Nevada, where Duran, a man just scraping by, is accused of a murder he says he didn't commit. Mm -hmm. So dark, mm -hmm. I'm already pulled in, interested. We'll begin previews on September 18th at the Robert W. Wilson MCC Theater Space, and it will officially open on October 7th. I can't wait, sounds cool. great. Mm -hmm. And we found out who's gonna be playing alongside Alice Ripley as Norma Desmond. Alice yeah. Ripley. <laughs> Alice was just here yesterday, yesterday. talking to me about she's doing something yes. over at North Shore Music Theater. I'm going, mm -hmm. maybe more than once, even though it's only running for like two or three weeks. <laughs> and she was saying that she wants, sounds like she really wants to make it sexy mm -hmm. yes. between Norma and Joe Gillis. Yes, she yeah. did. So yeah. I was wondering, well, who's going to get all the full Norma? Who's going to get that? Nicholas Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. uh, the very dashing Nicholas Rodriguez will be playing Joe Gillis. Uh, William Michaels will play Max. Uh, Lizzie. Klemperer will play mm -hmm. Betty Schaefer, which of course is the role that Al Shipley played on Broadway. Right. Uh, Kevin Massey is Artie Green, Neil Mayer, Cecil B. DeMille. It's all directed and choreographed by Kevin P. Hill, and it starts September 24th up in Beverly, Massachusetts. I will be there <laughs> to see <laughs> the full Al Shipley. Perhaps multiple times. Right. Uh, there are a couple of other things that you can check out on the site right now. We did uh, Five Secrets backstage with Dear Evan Hansen, Correct. Sky Lakota Lynch mm -hmm. took us through all of that. Um, there was a press event this and morning. Yes, there was. You, yes. went, right? you got to meet the, Brian we, Cox. I met Brian Cox this morning. The Great Society is coming to Broadway, and we got yeah. a lot of pics of Are all Are you all the people. way with LBJ? All the way. All the I way learned a lot LBJ. of history this morning. Look at that. All right. Well, Paul, thank you so I'm much. Out. We, uh, Caitlin, would you introduce us to today's guest? Gladly. Yes, we have Will Poland here with us in the studio today. As we said, he's currently playing Jem Finch and To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway. He made his Broadway debut in Sweat, and he's also known for some of his off-Broadway performances, which include Punk Rock and The Wayside Motor Inn, which I'm pretty sure he won a Drama Desk Award He's nodding his head, so I'm ensemble. Yes, he won an award for it, so he's awesome. We're glad he's here. I just needed that confirmation before I kept going. Uh, make sure you guys leave all of your questions in the comments below, and make sure you follow at Mockingbird B-Way on social media to stay up to date on what Will and his talented cast are doing. Everyone, please welcome Will and Ryan. Hello there, sir. Hi. Welcome to Brian. Thanks for confirming. So, oh, yeah, you know. I was, I was like looking for the eyes. I was like, you know, on my, on my life. Uh, thank you, you so much for having me. Of it's course. Oh, gosh. Thank you for joining us. I mean, To Kill a Mockingbird. This yes. is, we were talking before the show. What an incredible piece of theater mm -hmm. that you are a part of. You couldn't ask for a better team above you. You couldn't have asked for a better cast mm -hmm. alongside you. What is it like to be a part of this incredible, incredible production? Uh, man, it's it's uh, it's just such a joy. You yeah, know, I, I'm, I, I'm, I have I have so, so much gratitude, you know, and um, to just be included in the group of artists that went into the making of this is is just such an honor, you yeah. know, and um, uh, it's like it just feels like this kind of turning point for me and uh, hopefully that Broadway starts bringing back the idea of having these great American plays written mm -hmm. by great American playwrights with um, these big strong cast of great um, New York actors yeah and yeah 
to be a part of something like that is just uh, it's just a joy. So I can imagine. I feel very very lucky. The, I was just th the thinking of the writers that you've worked with, yeah. Lucy Thurber and Lynn Nottage and Aaron Sorkin. I mean, just the some of the greatest living playwrights yes. right now. What is something? Um, that th these writers have inspired you with? It, w w you know, what's, what's something that they've taught you in the time that you've been able to speak their words? Um, you know, what, what I learned, I mean, Lu Lucy Thurber, who I, that was my first job in New York, right. working on her right. play Scarcity at Rattlestick Playwrights Theater. This, this, it was my first job in New York City, and, you know, Lucy and Daniel Talbot, who directed their, you know, their family to mm -hmm. me, and, um, you know, the, getting to be involved in that process, getting led into this big family, this big artistic family down at Rattlestick and having these five plays going on at the same time. Yeah, you yeah. know, It was such an exciting experience as a, as a young artist in New York City. And I mean, what I've learned from all of them, I think, is their ability to collaborate, I think, is, is across the board. Mm -hmm. um, just something that struck me as, as something I wanted to bring to my work. I mean, I know with Lynn, you know, she has this tradition of before the first preview, sort of bringing everyone involved uh, in in the process of making the play, the cast, the crew, stage management, everybody together. And, and she sort of has this idea of like, I'm giving, handing my play over to you guys now. Mm, interesting. And, um, yeah. you know, it's just such a beautiful idea. And, and you know, it's like you said, it's like I, I, I look around at the people I've I've had a chance to work with and I sort of have to like pinch myself because it yeah. seems it seems just like a dream that I that I had back in, you know, Chicago when I was like seven. Right, you know? right. So uh, if this is a dream, please let me know. If we're getting incepted right now, I need to I need to know. <laughs> right, if no. Leo Leo is coming for me, I, I'd like to know. No, and um, these people in turn <laughs> have said wonderful things about you. So, I mean, the, the, they recognize your talent as well. When you, did you always know that theater was going to be the thing for you? Um, I mean, you come from, like you said, close to Chicago. Sports mm -hmm. is yeah. legion in <laughs> Chicago. It so, is. So if you aren't involved in sports, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> um, but so, so was theater and performing, were those always the plan for you? I think, I think my mom uh, got me into my first acting class when I was like seven. Oh, wow. Um, you know, I wanted to do 10, to, you know, we had a local rec center and, it, my mom, with all her kids, I'm one of six, and every, she made sure everyone was always very active, mm -hmm. you know? So she was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I think I want to do this, like, tennis. And she was like, you're too crazy for that. <laughs> and she put me in this acting <laughs> class because, I, you know, I'd go around the house doing these voices and okay. playing these characters and you know, watching movies over and over again and really, like, getting swept away in stories. Like, Matilda, you know, was oh, when I was absolutely. really young. I watched that movie, like, 400 times, you know, and sure. just wanted to literally, like, jump in <laughs> to the TV screen with Miss Honey and, and yes. that class, you know? Yep. Um, so I think I always knew, like, it, it took a lot of other people guiding me mm -hmm. and a lot of people encouraging me. Because for me, what I wanted most was to be a, was to be an athlete. You know, I wanted right, to be Michael yeah. Jordan. And, uh, oh, you know, sure. I wanted to play for the Bears in the fall and then the Cubs in the spring. And then <laughs> maybe if we could squeeze, like, the <laughs> hockey season in, you know, be the star <laughs> winger for the Blackhawks. So, like... Ambitious. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I had big dreams, you know. Yeah, but absolutely. When I played sports, you know, I was always afraid when the ball would get hit to me because I didn't want to, you know, I never want, I never wanted the ball to hit me. I wanted everybody to yeah. do well, but like, I was just I'm so worried about like messing up the team. Yeah. Like the team was winning. I was like, I don't want to be the guy that <laughs> screws this up. And like when I was in, uh, in a theater, like all I wanted was to be on stage mm -hmm. and, and be a part of. And so I think... But I never would have found it on my own. It took right. so much of like uh, you know family and amazing teachers and mm -hmm. people who worked at the rec center to sort of pull me into it. Yeah, help guide you where mm -hmm. you needed to go. That's fantastic. To Kill a Mockingbird is of course a book that m most of us, if we've grown up here, have read in mm -hmm. middle school or high school. Um, what was your relationship to the book when you when you got involved in the process uh, for the for Aaron Sorkin's play? Yeah, we we read the book in I think it was in eighth grade. Okay. Um, so and and we we watch the film you know people this question comes right, up quite yeah. a bit throughout this process and it's interesting the the film you know i think because we like studied it mm -hmm. you know and it was much more uh you know a part of the curriculum like i wasn't affected by the story as much as like sitting and watching the film right. at that yeah. time yep uh because i mean we we went to a, i went to a big junior high school and it was like everyone sat and we watched you know gregory peck and, yeah um 
It was interesting before we did the first reading coming back to the book, it, it really felt like the first time I was reading it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it such a, uh, incredible work that has, you know, stood the test of time is that every time you're reading it, it feels like the first time you're reading sure. it because you're Discover reading it always things. from a different context. You know, for me, it yeah. was as a, as an older brother, you know, um, being able to identify that and jam and, and following that. And I'm sure for parents reading it from that perspective, you know, there's just so many ways into the story. Yeah. So it was just, it's, it's such an incredible book. It's such a beautiful book. And what Harper Lee wrote is so incredible. Um, so something about like being in my apartment and like, I was like reading that last page where it's, you know, he's, you know, Atticus sat and read, read to Jem and he was there when he woke up in the morning and I was like, I just got super emotional <laughs> and I lived with, um, I was living with two other guys at the time uh, <laughs> and one of them came into my room and, you know, cause he wanted to like borrow some like eggs or something like that. And like, and I, you know, he came in and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you just take the eggs, man. And he was like, what's going on? I was like, no, no, like it's like the air and it's, it's in here. It's like this. It was Harper stuff. Lee. But it's, yeah, you know, it is. It's just an incredibly, it's an incredible story. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, it, and it always feels like the first time. Right. Which is such a great thing for us getting to, you know, do it eight times a week. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. What, what, what excited you initially when you, when you were at the, those table reads, what excited you about playing gem initially? And what do you enjoy most about playing gem now that you're, you know, um, months into this? I mean, it's so funny. I, that, that first table read, I was like, it was the first table read. We were told that there was no way I was going to get the job. You know, we right. were sort of, a couple of the others. Yeah. We were yeah. sort of, placeholders for the children they would right. eventually find exactly. so which is an interesting for an actor you know being that freedom is like kind of great you're like <laughs> yeah. going in being like i'm not gonna get I this can't job mess this up. like i you know <laughs> right. relatively i cannot mess this up <laughs> i mean and obviously like you know aaron sorkin who went to my college and i met him as a student with like 15 oh, other wow. students and like wow. we went to his office in la and like I remember like sitting in that room with him and just like it all seemed so far away mm -hmm. like the idea of ever getting to work with him was like just you know, unimagined. maybe one time when I was like, you know, old, you know, way down the sure, line, you yeah. know, and had been through it, you know. But mm -hmm. I mean, the other thing was, uh, I mean, obviously, just every actor at that table was like I admired so much. But with uh, particularly, you know, Celia Keenan Bolger, I saw Glass Menagerie when when I had first come to New York that production. And uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> <You gotta laughs> this is what happens to you. You know what I mean? Like, getting emotional right I, now. No, I mean like, but I saw that that performance. Uh, I mean, that performance is one of the reasons I wanted to move to New York and like leave my family in Chicago and come here and be an actor because I was like, I want to, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I remember like seeing her like two seats away from me at the table, and I was like, Oh my god! And I was like, That's Celia Keenan Bolger. And I was like, Okay. It's like, What am I gonna say? I was like, What am I gonna? How am I gonna? I just want to like just introduce. I gotta like shake her hand. And I think I said something stupid. I was just like, Hey, I'm so sorry to bother you. Like, are you doing an accent for this reading? And she was just like. I'm Celia. I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm Will. I'm like doing this thing. But um, I mean, I don't know that for me, that's what this whole experience has been is like, cause I, I, I saw Gideon in uh, The Few at Rattlestick. I don't know if you saw that. Mm, yeah, performance. I ha yeah, But absolutely. that performance was staggering. And I, and I had just come to New York and I was like, I was like, I want, that's what I, I want to be an artist like that. Or, you mm -hmm. know, and I saw Stark and Kinky Boots when I was a student. It's like, and just, so like to just be at this table yeah, with yeah. all of these people, and I was like, there has been some mistake, <laughs> but I'm not gonna tell the anybody. I don't want to. I'm like, I don't want to say anything because they're gonna be like, oh, Will Pol. Oh no, 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 no. We wanted like Will Poulter, like the wrong. We have the wrong Will. And be like, I'm sorry. He's probably in England, so like maybe I can just stay for this reading. But like, you know. It's so indescribable that that feeling, but like mostly it was so like getting to work with Celia, mm -hmm. you know, she's such an incredible human being, and and everybody in Gideon, and it's like, but for me, so much of this play is us three, you know, we're right? This, we're this Absolutely. Unit in the play. Absolutely. So, so Celia Keenan Bolger and, and Gideon Glick, for me, uh, getting to go to work with them every day, like, look, if I was like, you know, 
the ticket terror and got to go to work <laughs> and sit with them every day, like I'd be grateful right. because they're just incredible, incredible people. And like getting to play with them every night and mm -hmm. in that stage is our jungle gym. Right. You know? right. And we're just playing like lava monster every night. And like, so it's just an incredible, that's really incredible. It sounds it. And we've been able, we've had the chance to talk to Gideon and Celia a little bit about, you know, as you mentioned, you know, these, uh, you're, you're adults and you're playing <laughs> children. Right. And we've heard a little bit about what they do to kind of just get in the, the mindset to mm -hmm. get ready in the play spirit what's something that you do to sort of ground yourself in gem before you go out on stage um you know i uh it's interesting i think i think in a long run i would never done a long run of, a, of anything before mm -hmm. so again i i relied heavily on my my castmates to sort of help me through that experience because uh you know there was a part of the run where i was like i i could sort of went through this phase where i was like i'm pretty sure i am the worst actor that's ever been on a stage and I mean, all that's happening is like, you've done it for longer than you've ever done anything, right? right. And so it just right. feels, something feels weird about that. So it, it's shifted, it's, it's, a, it's changed throughout the course of the run, what I, what I do. I mean, I think at the beginning of the run, I mean, I, the most important thing is I, I have a picture of my family taped to my mirror, you know? Mm -hmm. So I have my, my siblings, you know, and, I, and so they're just with me. Yeah. I mean, they're with me all the time. They're, they're, they're what's keeping me grounded in this interview right now, because sure. I'm very, very <laughs> nervous. So like, they sort of pulled me up out of that chair and sat me down here. Uh, so, you know, them and, uh, you know, early on the run, it was about the book, you know, mm -hmm. and I have, having like the book, the parts of the book highlighted and sort of having the quote sheet of whatever the people say about Jim, who he is, what he says about himself, which is always not always a reliable source sure, of information. But an interesting, yeah. yeah and, yeah. uh, and, you know, later on in the run, it was about reading, reading things that Jim would have read, right? Like, so Mark Twain, Jules Verne, um, so just reading these adventure stories that, yeah. that and sort of letting that and now for me it's like because we are sort of getting the the finish line is sort of in it's the it's coming in the distance. a little bit up for you yeah it's for us it's like i just like cling to every second i get with celia and gideon you know mm -hmm. and just like hearing about them and their day and sort of getting to connect with them before we go out is sort of the thing and so it, that's sort of what what's been yeah. you know, connecting me in before we go on. Absolutely. And I, I want to open it up to yeah. people that are watching along in just a second. But I have to ask about, um, we, we haven't mentioned Jeff Daniels, of course. Sure. Here. And yeah, so yeah. anyone that, you know, uh, for, for a young actor to be sharing the stage with Jeff Daniels and having him play your father, what has it been like to get to know with him? Yeah, I mean, he was, an, I mean, obviously, like, he was another one at the, at that table, at that yeah. first read. I was like, this is not real. Like this is that's you know that's Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff fucking I'm sorry. No, you oh can my god! That. Can we? Can we? You can't. It's the can internet. We? Yeah, can we you bleep out. I got yeah, the bleep guy working yeah. extra <laughs> overtime today. Kyle, um, Kyle's on top of it. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> I uh, I will uh, I will minimize that. But that's Jeff effing Daniels over yeah. there. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, with Jeff, it's like he's such you know he's such a professional. You know, I've learned so much from him. And like, I think just knowing, uh, you know, who he is as a man, I, it's so interesting, like how the, the world of life and the play are colliding for me mm -hmm. is like, you know, just the, from the outside, not knowing all that much about it, but like, you know, who he is as a father and a husband and the idea that, you know, him moving his family to Michigan and focusing on giving his kids a normal life, Absolutely. like that. I mean, that, that is like, you know, because family is everything yeah. to me. You know, right. I think it's the yeah. most important thing in life. So the fact that that's who he is. That's mm -hmm. his bedrock. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, right. you know, that was incredibly moving. And, you know, he's a leader in our building. So I've learned, you know, and obviously I think for him, more than, you know, anyone else, I think for him and Celia, uh, but for him especially, he really was like stepping into that role as, as, I mean, it's just a brave thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously it's there's just so much. He, it's it's like a, you know, like a literary history. You know yep. what I mean? And right. like totally. everybody knows what they think Atticus Finch looks like. And so watching him sort of navigate that and the way he was able to do it with um, uh, ease and grace and mm -hmm. uh, kindness and uh, you know really helping everybody establishing for us like what the work environment was going to be and he's just a wonderful scene partner he's always present he's always um, he always is put, putting the focus on who he's, who he's in the scene with which you know as actors, we like attention, you know? <laughs> right, um, right. So Absolutely. that feels great, you know? Um, 
<laughs> but he, yeah, so, you know, all of those things, you know, but mostly, uh, you know, who he is as a man, you know, he's a family man, and, you know, I, I actually, I, I, he knows this, I think, I, I, this is when, because when we first started rehearsals again, like, I felt like, Mm-hmm. you know like the intern who like you know I didn't want to talk to anybody like I didn't want to bother anybody but I saw him and his son perform at City Winery you know his son oh, they right. have a band yes. together yep. mm-hmm. and I feel like I learned so much about him watching him play with his son and his daughter-in-law and like he had this song about you know his father singing about his father and our hometown and then the son came out and it was like I don't know. I just, you know, who he is as a man is something I, I aspire to be, you know? Yeah, so, totally. I get it. But I've learned a lot from him as an artist. I mean, I got, my brother and I, like, when I was home for winter break, it was like that, you know, Steve Jobs movie came out. <laughs> and, like, we watched that movie. We, you know, we, we, my brother and I, like, we watch, rewatch movie. That's what we do. Like, mm-hmm. We sit and we'll watch a movie we watch a hundred times and, like, kind of hang out while the movie's going right. on, like, Gladiator Training Day. <laughs> but, oh, you know, so, like, that was, and, you know, so... I just I've learned so much just from what I feel so lucky to just be an observer of everybody and yeah. him particularly. That's fantastic, Caitlin. Yes. What would some of the people like to know? From yes, Will? I think we have time for one question. Sure. It's yeah. the one that Will's we've gotten. Rambled. Will rambled. No, please. It's no, your the, one, <laughs> the one we've gotten the most is a lot of people just want to know like how does it feel to be in this show and like the audience reacting and like what does it mean to you to be in To Kill a Mockingbird? What does it mean to me? Yeah. To be in To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, you know, I think, I think, you know, I've, I've found a lot of times, like, in an experience, when, when you're inside of it, it's so hard to uh, put it into a context for your life, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, when you're in the doing of it, like, right now, so much of it is, like, I think an enormous responsibility. You know, we want to bring bring this important story out so like mm-hmm. that's for me so much of where the focus is right now is like but it, it from I, I use the word honor before it is it's a tremendous tremendous honor that that i was asked asked to do this i mean right. um yeah it's like you know i i say this before the show you know it's like we want to you know we want we want people to come in and we want to take them somewhere you know we want to we want to take them to 1934 or make mm-hmm. them we want to take them to southern alabama and take them into this other world you know and th- have the opportunity to do that i mean that's what like i said earlier is like that's what brought me in and was right. like no matter what was going on in my life is like i could i could open up harry potter and i was a student at hogwarts mm-hmm. you know and i could live in that world and just exist there you right. know so the the idea that we can give that to other people in the context of such a uh, important story is is incredible. Yeah, yeah, I know, and I, I say this as it, one of the most tremendous pieces of theater mm-hmm. I've ever mm-hmm. seen. It's Thank absolutely so phenomenal, and all of you are incredible. Um, we can continue to sing the praises of Jeff fucking Daniel, and, <laughs> Kate and Bolger, and Will Pullen, and Gideon Glick, and the Thank incredible you. cast over there, but you should do yourselves a favor and go see To Kill a Mockingbird mm-hmm. at the Schubert Theater. Congratulations, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Thank for coming you so by much and chatting with us. It's yeah, been such a guys. pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Of course. Uh, Caitlin, would you take us out, please? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Maurizio Martinez all about his upcoming concert at Feinstein's 54 Below.